Good afternoon. We are trying to figure out who this little horn is that we are told about in Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 8. And the only way we can identify it is as we look at the characteristics of this little horn as described in Daniel 7 and Daniel 8. Today I want to draw your attention to Daniel chapter 8 verse 12 and we read these words. It prospered in everything it did and truth was thrown to the ground. I want you to notice that the question that pops up in my mind is the question, what is truth? Now we see that in John chapter 17 verse 16, Jesus actually makes this comment. He says, thy word is truth. Now he's referring to the Father and he's referring to what he has been saying. Then it says in John chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we see that what this little horn is trampling on is the truthfulness regarding God. In John chapter 17 verse 3, we hear these words from Christ's mouth. He says, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So we see that when this little horn attacks truth and tramples on truth, it's all about the truthfulness regarding God. He says that God is a liar. He says that God is a murderer. He says that God is unfaithful. But we find out that as we study the word, that Jesus himself, who was the word, says that the devil was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. So we see that as we look at this little horn, that what it's doing, it's actually promoting the lies of the devil regarding God. It's so interesting, we're going to be looking at this in greater detail as to how he goes about trampling on truth. I want you to notice the next thing he does in Daniel chapter 8 verse 24. It says there, He will become very strong, but not by his own power. We are brought to an understanding that what gives this little horn power, what makes this little horn so, so prosperous in what it does, is that it is supported by some power. The charisma of this power is handed over to this little horn. I want you to notice what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. He says there, Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. We need to know what the word is all about in order to be able to stand up against the lies of the devil so that we won't be deceived by him. It says further, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. You will recall how that in Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, we were told that the dragon was in actual fact that ancient serpent, the ancient serpent that was so crafty and actually caused Eve to fall as a, re a result of his deceit, as a result of his lies. We also found out how that this, this dragon was also Satan. And the Hebrew for Satan is adversary, one who stands up against you. We also find out that the Greek for the word devil means that he's a slanderer. The devil slanders truth as he tramples on it. Do you know what truth is? I then want to draw your attention to Daniel chapter 8 verse 25. And in verse 25 we read these words. It says there, he will cause deceit to prosper. So not only is he powerful, but he's successful. He gets his lies to be recognized by the world. I'm so amazed that the world is following after Charles Darwin, who says that we come and descend from um, monkeys, from creation. Whereas God's word teaches me that God is the creator of heaven and earth. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1, I'm counseled that I was made in the image of God. And yet the devil is so successful in his deceit 
that he has got us to believe a lie. I want you to know that the word deceit actually can also be fraudulent. That means not only does the devil tell lies about God, but certain attributes of God, certain things that belong to God alone, he claims to be able to do. And I want you to notice that this little horn we're going to find out speaks boastfully. And what does it mean to speak boastfully? What does it mean to blaspheme God's name? And we're going to find out a little bit more of this in our next study. But for today, we find out that truth is trampled on. The truth regarding God and the love that He has for us. We find out that He is very strong, but He doesn't have His own strength. But that the devil gives Him the backing He needs. We see how that in Daniel chapter 8 verse 25, He is fraudulent and deceitful but very prosperous in doing that. Dear friends, we need to put on the armor of God. I want to finish off by reading to you out of Acts chapter 13. Paul has an experience with a, a sorcerer. His name is Elamus, and Elamus actually just means sorcerer. And in verse 9, we read these words, Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elamus, and said, You are a child of the devil, an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Here right we see straight away that as we look at the characteristics of this little horn, if Paul was looking at him, he would have referred to him as a person who is a child of the devil, an instrument in the devil's hands. Dear friends, do you tell lies? Are you deceitful? Are you fraudulent? We need to be cautious because it's possible that as a result of that we could be children of the devil. May the words we speak always be the words that are truthful. May God's word truly be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. May God guide you today and as you make this decision to be truthful, allow the God of truth to come and dwell in your heart.